Hi, this is Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing Live number 96, and we're going to talk today about how to take, how to learn how to sing on YouTube. So I wanted to say hi to you guys. Uh, looks like I've got Abby waiting there. Hi, Abby, and uh, uh, Lau, Lauki Topi. I am fine. How are you, sir? Um, nice to have you guys here. You're our, like waiting in the in the wings for this to start. So thanks, Subia. Wow. All right. Nice to see you, Subia. Welcome. Glad you're here today. It's um, early morning. For those of you who don't know, Subia is in India, and it is like early in the morning, like 2:30, right, Subia, or something like that. Anyway, um, it's a time when she really should be asleep. But she's here with us, so that's very nice, very exciting. So how's everybody today? We're just uh, about a minute away from getting started officially, and so we're kind of in our pre-show show moment here um, in our little, up. Oh, it's the top of the hour, time to start. Hi, this is Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing Live number 97. Did I say 97? I think maybe I said 96. This is number 97. And this is singing tips on how to take, uh, how to learn how to sing on YouTube. It's not an easy thing to do. So um, YouTube's a great place to learn how to do so many different things. Oh my gosh, I spend so much time on there, usually about having to do with computers. <laughs> and uh, but you can sure get lost. You can go down so many rabbit holes when you're trying to find information and the best information, right? So today we're going to be, and, and those rabbit holes can take you hours and hours down into these different kinds of places. And that's one of the challenges of YouTube. So we'll talk about how to kind of try and minimize some of that today. So how is everybody doing? Uh, Zubia, you are on time. She said, yep, it's 1.30 a.m. Oh my gosh. What devotion, Zubia. Uh, hi, uh, Sybil. Nice to have you here today. And uh, Meadow, um, and nice to have you here, and I'm glad you guys know each other and kind of can chat a little bit. So, um, let's, uh, let's just talk a little about, have you ever been helped with singing by watching YouTube? Yes or no? Have you ever been helped with singing by watching YouTube? Yes or no? Just let me know in the comment section below. I think the fact that you're here, hopefully, is uh, <laughs> there's a good answer for that. You know, you can give a, a positive answer. But for those of you who are joining us, have you ever have you ever been helped by watch uh, helped with your singing by watching videos on YouTube? I'm curious if you just say say yes or no. Uh, there's so many wonderful places to go on YouTube. It's kind of like walking into a gigantic town with, uh, yeah, so it looks like everybody's uh, kind of saying yes, uh, they have been helped. And um, so, oh, Meadow says you helped me. Thank you, Meadow. I appreciate that. Very nice of you to say that. So, um, I can appreciate that, that it's a great challenge. It's a great challenge to find good information because there's just so much. And like I say, it's like walking into a great big town and there's dozens of, dozens of places, dozens of shops everywhere, and they have great stuff and interesting things. And it's just, uh, it's like going to a, oh, I don't know, your favorite store. Everything is there and it's, it can be overwhelming, frankly. Um, CB says, I have only YouTube to gain knowledge about singing. So there are many out there in the world. I remember when I was uh, in high school, uh, I was, I knew there was one, I knew of like one teacher who was uh, teaching voice lessons that I, that I can recall at least. And I was studying with her. Um, and it was the, the information available was very limited back then. Um, and there was no computer. I mean, there was no internet. Yeah, there was no computer. There was no internet. There were no computers in high school. I think there were gigantic computers at IBM and so forth. 
But uh, this is back in 19, are you ready for this? 68, 69, 70, 71. I graduated 71. Yes, I am an ancient potato or something. <laughs> anyway, there was little information. Now you've got the opposite problem. It is a tidal wave of information. And when it goes over the top of you, it's like you got a little cup here and you're holding this little cup of information after that tidal wave went over the top of you. It's just so, there's just so much there. So, um, if you count, then yes. Abby, thank you. That's so kind of you. Abby says yes. If you count, then the answer is yes. So, <clears throat> What do you do um, if you're like Subia, for example? She doesn't have anybody around uh, to go to for singing lessons, and this is the only place that she can. Of course, we have Skype. Now, Skype has kind of changed the, the world um, as far as t online teaching, and there are other online ways, you know, to interface. I mean, there's the conferencing and and um, hangouts and all kinds of different ways to be face to face on the on the internet and it's kind of you know it's kind of remarkable um, this Monday started out with uh, I was teaching uh, a gentleman in the UK and um, and here I am sitting in in the States and we had a great internet connection and we had a great uh, session online so that is helping but for a number of reasons, uh, many of us go to the internet for, or go to YouTube particularly, for how-to information. And, uh, and when you get there, you find out that there's not just a couple, there's hundreds. Hundreds, maybe, th I don't know, maybe thousands, but in terms of singing teachers, there's hundreds. And, um, and they have great videos, and they have great ideas, and so, you follow one down the down the line and get into some some of their videos and then that leads you to oh there's another good one I think I'll look at that one and pretty soon you've watched a dozen and then you think now where do I start how do I get started on this I have a voice that needs help and it it's kind of my voice it's not everybody else's voice how do I know everything I'm reading is going to work so um, Lauki Topi says is singing along with pop singers uh, MP3 improving singing, not necessarily uh, Loki, because, for example, maybe uh, let's just say, for example, that one of the ladies here is uh, loves Adele, and all she does is sing songs that Adele sings. It's very possible that she could hurt her throat, because Adele sings right at the top of her chest voice all the time, and that's the reason why she's had two hemorrhages one of the reasons why she's had two hemorrhages and and so it even though they're a very popular singer doesn't necessarily mean that they're singing in a way that is going to be best for your voice and how do you know even if you take a really great singer uh, I mean someone that sings technically really well um, how do you know that when you're singing it you're singing it technically really well Maybe they go up into their head voice, but in order for you to go to your head voice, you have to pull your chest voice too high. So then singing along with that pop singer might get you into trouble vocally. It could be damaging to you. I mean, it could be damaging to the vocal cords. So the answer is not necessarily uh, Lauki, because if we knew for sure that they were, that they, not only were they, had a great song, but they had good technique. And we knew for sure that we were using good technique to sing along with them. Yes, the answer is yes. That's hard to do when you're on your own. Hi, George. Nice to have you here today. Amido um, says, like Ariana Grande, she sings very high. I really want to sing like her. Yes, yeah, so if you try and sing like her, but you haven't learned to get into your head voice, you might be just pulling your chest the whole time. And that can be damaging to us to our voices, to our instrument. We could cause physical damage that could only be fixed maybe sometimes by surgery or by at least, at a minimum, vocal rest. But for sure, a, a trip to the doctor. 
So we got to be careful with that. That's one of the problems I see as a teacher. I have people come in, they sing all the time, and they, they're, they're singing along with their favorite artists who are horrible singers. Well, or have horrible technique, and so guess what? They're reinforcing bad habits. That's, it's kind of a landmine of, a, uh, of the geography that we start singing our, with our favorite singer only to find out that, well, they're, I love the song, but their technique is kind of damaging to my voice. And that can happen. So, but let's let's get down to um, how how then can if you if you were just starting out and you got online and you were looking around and you saw like you know hundreds of different resources for singing on on YouTube, how do you went how do you narrow it down? There's a story. Um, uh, you know, you've, we've heard of, many of us have heard at least, of Alice in Wonderland. And there's one part of the story where she's walking along a road and she comes to a crossroad. She doesn't know which way to go. And there is a Cheshire, Cheshire cat sitting, I think it's in a tree. And she says uh, to the Cheshire cat, um, I wrote this down. She says, which road should I take? The cat says, where are you going? She says, Alice in Wonderland says, I don't know. And the cat re answers, then it doesn't matter which road you take. So sometimes we almost don't know which direction we're going, or maybe we don't know what we need, or we don't know what our, you know, we don't know what's the ch what's the major challenge with our voice, and so on and so on. And so it probably doesn't matter which which road you take. But I, I'm going to suggest a couple things that I think will help you narrow some things down. And this is a really large topic. I'll probably do some more videos about this because I, I'm only going to cover like three ideas here, three or four ideas. And I think there's quite a few here that can really help. Maybe that'll be my next my next video. It'll be part two, and maybe even a part three. I think there's some things here we can talk about that would really make a difference. Okay, so let me just say hi to anyone else that's joined us. Uh, Meadow says I really try all the videos. Okay, and the one that fits me, I stick to it. Okay, that's that's a I think that's a, a viable approach and. Um, and you can kind of feel when something's working or when it's not. Uh, you can definitely feel when it's kind of hurting, you know, or it's not it's not working in your voice. There's a little bit of a, uh, you know, I would probably say be careful that um, what you're doing is correct, but you don't think it's correct, so you throw it out. I mean, there's, you know, that's part of the challenge of doing it online by yourself is the direct feedback. But I would say if anything starts to hurt or feel uh, like it creates um, any pain or anything like that, then you, of course you would stop it altogether. Don't do it. Okay, so I've got a couple notes here. Let me just say number. This is note number one. Def if you can, if possible, define what you want. Define what you want. Um, if so, if you were starting out and looking at the, a whole city of of authors, creators, videos about singing, if you don't know what you want, it doesn't really matter. And so I think it might save you time if you decided what it is you're looking for. What kind of help do you want with your voice? Now. Let's talk about that for a second. I'm going to suggest that you look at two options. Do you want to learn how to sing a specific style or genre of music? Or do you want to learn how to sing good technique? And let's talk about the differences. Um, if you want to learn to sing songs from like a favorite rock star, that would be you want to learn how to 
do a certain genre. Let's say you love rock and you want to learn how to sing rock, a rock song or you know certain kinds of songs in rock. Um, then you're really looking for someone to train you in style or, or in a specific genre. And that can be something important to know. Um, whereas the technique is a little bit different. A technique would be, um, do you want to learn to sing maybe like really great high notes? Because you could apply that to several, well, any genre, right? If you know how to uh, condition your voice so that you can increase your range, then you would be able to apply that technique to multiple kinds of songs and multiple kinds of genres, Broadway or rock or pop or uh, jazz or um, opera or classical music and so forth. So in other words, the vocal technique enables you to uh, swim in any kind of water, so to speak. It enables you to uh, address the songs of your choice, whatever they might be. Um, I think that's, that's something that you can kind of discern then right away. Do I want to be like, kind of be overall a good, have good technique so I can sing whatever I want to sing? Or do I want to go learn how to sing, uh, you know, um, you know, a song from, you know, one of Freddie Mercury's songs or something. Um, so, or do I want, I just, I want to learn how to just do opera. Uh, I just need, I want to learn how to do La Donne Mobile or, you know. So there's a little bit of difference between that. So let's talk about, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, George says, for me, it would be technique. I can sing in multiple genres. Yeah, I mean, some of us have already kind of like decided that, yeah, I'm not really interested in just being a, uh, learning a bunch of Adele songs. I, I want to, I want to learn how to sing. I want to learn how to ha develop this instrument that I have, and then I can apply it to whatever, whatever I want to do. In my case, I do musical theater, and there's a lot of times different genres within musical theater. I've been in an operetta in musical theater. Um, HMS Pinafore, and it was really a blast. I really enjoyed it. And I've also been in um, what would be one really different. Oh, Avita is a little bit more kind of a pop feeling. Um, that depends on the song, I guess. But in musical theater, you can experience different kinds of genres. I mean, uh, if you think of Civil War, for example, it's almost got a, it's got a country kind of a country folk kind of feel to it and uh or big river which is you know mark twain huck finn tom sawyer uh written by mark twain and um not the play but the characters that's kind of a country kind of feel so i mean there's all different genres inside musical theater so i don't want to necessarily just learn how to do one genre I want to learn how to sing well so that no matter what the high note is in any kind of genre, I, I can address it. Uh, George says, for me, it'd be technique. Uh, Meadow says, well, I think it's going to hurt. And I think it's going to hurt in first. But then when you get used to it, there is a memory, muscle memory. There, that's a conversation going on, I think. Um, Meadow says, I love R&B. I'd like to be a singer like Jennifer Hudson because I love this style so much. Yeah, amazing singer, by the way, Jennifer Hudson. Um, Ink says no uh, singing vid uh, videos have helped him. Um, Meadows also, well, I think it's gonna. Oh, I already read that. Um, George says, is, a, is this the world we created? Oh, a Queen song. Okay. Love RB, really. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. All right, so some other discussions going on there. I'll leave that to you guys. All right, so let's take, here's another sub, sub, uh, um, another division of this same subject here. Now let's talk about technique. What exactly does technique mean? Technique would be like building a house. With this, you know, if you're going to build your house, you want to, to have a solid foundation. You want to have a solid place for the 
frame than the citadel. You want a solid framing of the home with solid walls and and uh, and the, the electrical work and all of those things that go into the the beginnings of a, a home. You want a great roof that's not going to leak. So so you want this you want this great building, and that's I compare that to vocal technique. You want it to be a beautiful home, and then you. Genre would be more like, okay, now that we've got this home built, what color are we going to paint the walls? What, how are we going to decorate it? What is the style of the of the uh, of our living room going to be? You know, and and so um, the genre would be more or less working on the de decor, the decoration of the home, the, the and and the technique would be the home itself. Okay. So, my recommendation is, and I'm biased, I openly admit this, you've already heard my bias, I recommend technique. I recommend we learn technique. So that way you can, you can do whatever genre you want to. And not only that, you develop the mechanical, the mechanism to give you freedom in your voice, to give you control to give you the ability to face whatever you're facing in your songs. And I, I've got to tell you, that is a, a tremendous confidence builder. A tremendous confidence builder. You want to be able, I, I think that's the reason why I would recommend, and that's the reason why I've been interested in what I, in what I do and in what other people do who do this, <laughs> do the same thing, teach. Um, I love the the cut this idea of really developing the building the the house the vocal home the the vocal structure so that you can do whatever you want to do anything from opera to jazz to gospel to r and b to all of these things you want to have this this foundation because that way you won't be limited when you get into your the particular genre that you like. All right, and so I'm moving right along today. Last of all, this is my last point. Um, I think it's important that, and this is a hard thing for all of us. If you're on your own, you're trying to learn on your own, and you're you're in this like sea of information on YouTube. I think if you can determine what you need vocally, I think it's very helpful, very powerful concept. And that's one reason why I, um, I have a, te a vocal test, a power test, it's called, on my homepage, that helps you determine, kind of separating things down into like four different categories, helps you determine where you fit in this Basically, where you fit. What do you tend? What does your voice tend to do? And uh, and the, a really great way to measure that is to identify is to put you in right in your bridge. So for the for us guys, it's E F F sharp above middle C. For the ladies to do the test at the A B flat B and C C above middle C and C sharp. So by putting some ex, just a simple exercise in front of you. And having you sing, <laughs> just by having you do that, and the ladies up here. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. And do yours all the way up to the C sharp. Then analyzing that for a minute and, uh, by asking a certain number of questions, and that those questions are on the home page. You can go through those, answer those questions, and submit submit your answers. And you get an email back that'll give you a, a, a code, a guide to show you um, what you tend to do when you sing through the bridge. This is a really very powerful concept because now 
you can get exercises that will address so this uncovers a number of things. This, and this little test uncovers your needs. It helps give you some direction in your voice. And, and, you, and then vocal exercises can be uh, assigned, basis what you tend to do when you sing through that bridge of your voice. So there are four of those categories. Number one is pull chest high larynx, which is my, what I tend to do. It's what I tend to do when I sing through that, especially early on. So if I get fatigued or, uh, you know, I've over, I'm over singing, I'm in the ensemble or whatever, my larynx tends to go up and it's easy for me to start pulling a little bit. And so that's just what I kind of default to if I'm not careful. Now I hope today that I illustrated another vocal type and what you heard me do would be mix. That is a blend of chest and head. A third vocal type is called a light chest, no chest, which is characterized by ah, rather the vocal cords aren't coming together as firmly. And so uh, there's some loss of, um, well, there's a loss of air, a lot of air is more air is escaping through the vocal cords than maybe is ideal. And so as a result, it sounds airy or breathy. Um, the fourth vocal type would be a flip falsetto. And I had, it was interesting, I had a, a test submitted to me the other day, which you can do also, you can send it to me on an email, I'll listen to it and give you my impression. But the, uh, the test sounded like this. Actually, I, I went ahead and categorized that as light chest, no chest. It was there was no adduction at all. There was no chest voice. Period. Um, but it's kind of related to this. Also, this that was just complete falsetto. But if I said, ah, and flipped in the falsetto, ah, that's, a, that's the other uh, vocal type, is the flip falsetto. So you, by, by taking these tests, uh, by taking this power test, you can determine your vocal type. So it's a way, if you're online and you're looking at this mass of people, that you you know you want to look at all these videos and you just don't know where to start and how do you know what to start in and how do you know what's going to help you? This is a way to, to identify that, nail that down right away. You'll know right away what to do because as soon as you get your vocal type, let's say it's it's pull chest high larynx, then uh, you go to the web the website powertosing.com and go to the knowledge center. And there's videos about each vocal type. You learn all about your pull chest high larynx. And I give you exercises. I demonstrate those exercises as to how they're going to help you and show you. And then um, I give you another video of, of people who are professional singers that are examples of pull chest high larynx. And you'll see it. You'll hear it. You can see, oh, I can see that's pull chest. You start to get an idea of what it is, and then I give you ex I give you the uh, right there. You can download the exercises I've demonstrated, download them without me singing along, and then you can practice them. And they're not long; it's like 12 to 15 minutes at the most. And um, and if you do them as I show in the video, you make progress. You make progress with your voice. Now the reason why I the reason why I do where I give you the exercises in this hardest place of your voice is because once that comes together for you, once you eliminate some of the problems, and these exercises cause you to do good things, then the, the lower voice and the upper voice, the chest voice and head voice get better also. And then the, and then the voice starts to become unified. So you don't have this interrupted different kind of sound in the middle. So um, it's a very, very powerful way to um, narrow down 
stuff that you can start to work on that's going to have immediate, in very in many instances, an immediate positive impact on what you're doing vocally. It will cause you to do better things if you do them as as I've shown you, as I as I've demonstrated. So, uh, so what you should know is that in the description below, on YouTube, in the description, you can get. Um, a PDF and it take, gives you all those links that I just mentioned. It takes you right to the test, the power test. Um, power to sing, power test. It's a vocal test. It uh, gives you links to each of those vocal types. Pull chest, high larynx, light chest, no chest, flip, falsetto, mix. And gives you links to all of the downloads for the free exercises. It'll save you a lot of time. So just go to that description, download it, and you've got a PDF to work from and you don't have to try and find all that stuff. Um, okay, so let me back up a little bit and see if uh, there's any comments or questions. Um, I'm curious if anybody here uh, knows your, do you know your vocal type and what you tend to do when you sing to the bridge? And have, have the, any of the, if you do, have you done these exercises? Have they made any difference? Okay, so let me see if there's any questions I can answer about our topic here. Um, let me see. I'm just checking here to see if uh, any comments, questions about the vocal type or the technique. Uh, Subia says, I'm an Indian and I know about SLS technique and many people, I guess, knows it, but seminar is a great idea. Okay, so. I guess I'm going to have to back up and try and catch that. Um, okay, so I don't see anything directly related to uh, this topic, so let me back up and catch um, some of these things. So we go, uh, I think you can help sing any, I think you can sing any genre, Chuck. You just have to try and figure out a way to sing the genre without hurting your voice. Okay, that's what uh, Ink thinks, and I agree. I think we can sing any genre, as long as our technique is solid. We have solid technique. We we can sing any genre. Um, George says, for me, it would be okay. Technique versus uh, style. You can sing in multiple genres. Meadows as well. It's going to hurt in first, but when you, then you get used to it. As there's a memory in Muscle memory. Uh, Chuck says, oh, Chuck, when you sing high notes, do, this is ink, do you lower your larynx or ha have it kept in the neutral position? There's there's a reason why we do the dopey sound and we do the nay, 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 which is a little bit more of a, a funny kind of exaggerated sound. The other direction kind of raise the larynx a little bit. And what we're trying to do with those um, tools vocal tools is just to connect the tone. So if I said uh, and it cracked, then I would want to just add a little bit of an imposed sound. The objective is to connect the tone so that it doesn't go in the falsetto. Then, uh, if I can do it that way, maybe I'd do it on go. Go, 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 go. Oh, didn't make it, so then I would have to impose just a little bit. Go, 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 go. So, let's say I make it. Well, now, let me try it a little less dopey. Go, 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 All right. If I start getting it that way, well, let's do it on no, no. No, 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 no. So as soon as we can, we want to discard the dopey hootie sound or the nay, 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 discard that as soon as we can connect the tone. It's just that because we don't talk that way, why would we sing that way? So we want to get rid of it. We don't talk like that. 
So we want to get rid of that bratty sound. So we just want to get to our normal voice our, our, that we have when we speak. But those are great, powerful tools to use to connect the tone. Because so many, I didn't, I couldn't do that. I couldn't connect the tone at first. In fact, I couldn't sing above the E. You all know that. Uh, so they're temporary, that's the reason for them. Um, so you don't have to lower your larynx after a while. It, it's, the exercises retrain the larynx. The larynx will need to be just resting where you speak at speech level. The larynx just needs to be right here. You see, it's not moving all around. It just kind of sits right there, unless I'm yawning, you know, drop way down. Um, so overall, we just want to be able to do it with our normal voice. It's going up a little bit. What we don't want to have happen is and have it disappear, like you're swallowing. It's going to it's going to kind of do this, you know, as you're singing and and speaking and talking because it's also got different vowels and so forth. So there's some little tilt, there's a little motion in it. But overall, if I if I were if the larynx was really going up, I'd say ma 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 all kind of the same. Um. Same thing with nay, 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 nay. The larynx is slightly up, but it's not up, not up as high as nay, 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 nay. I'm not pulling it. I'm not pulling the chest up, and the larynx is not going in the swallowing mode. George says, "Oh, is this the world we created, Queen song?" Okay, Meadow, I love R and B, Ink. To meadow, it's not meant to hurt at all. If you're hurt, you're doing it incorrectly. Despite whether it's a new way of singing or not, singing should never hurt. Yeah, let me just say one thing that uh, in the case of a student who's who has a vocal type that's kind of a light chest, no chest, uh, there are times when I have them quite aggressive in their singing. I might have them say something like na 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 That's like the other side of the world for a singer who's had a light chest, no chest. And they may feel like that's absolutely wrong. And they might be frightened of it because it feels like it's, you know, it's starting to make them tired or, or something. They're feeling like, I've never felt that before. That can't be right. No, it's right. Because we have to, we have to take them a little bit beyond what, they're, uh, what is normal. So when they come back towards where they're used to, it's a little bit better than they were before. <laughs> You see, so um, there are instances, but it's not it's not pain. It's just like, oh, this is much more aggressive than I'm used to. That's one thing. But correctly said, yeah, if something is hurting, then you want to discontinue that. Um, okay, Subia retracted that message. So did Ink. Uh, Inks says we've been doing a I've been doing the flip falsetto exercise now, but when I sing, I flip into a light head voice instead of a mixed voice. If you flip, you're flipping into falsetto, unless you're reconnecting it. The flip is to to flip is to break into uh, is to disconnect the tone, and if you're staying disconnected, it's falsetto. If you feel a little bit of a a momentary like little crack, but it, or it didn't stay disconnected, then it's possible it's a light head voice. But if you've flipped into falsetto, mm -hmm. ah, ah, that's falsetto. Now we said, ah, 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 ah. So I reconnected that on purpose just to say that I could, you know, I might have a little road bump in the middle there, but I've reconnected it as I've gone up. Now we don't, that's not, that's not finished. We want it. We want to get rid of every little bump. So in that case, I would say, ah, I'd oppose it just a little bit as I go through there. So I want to get rid of that break. We do not, this technique eliminates the breaks. It smooths the transition from chest to head. So you have 
no break. Pure and simple. Uh, Abby says, I am a mixed vocal type, but it's very shaky and not strong in the bridge. So, Abby, it's probably, um, yes, I understand that. And I, I can remember mixing, but still feeling a little wobbly in that middle. So that'll, that'll come along, unless the reason why you're feeling, it might, you might in fact be wobbly, but maybe the larynx is still coming up and that's causing you some problem. Or maybe the vocal cords are pulling apart. Maybe it's uh, something like that. So because you're mixing doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have another tendency that's causing some issues in the bridge. Like I do, I mix, but I would still say, you know, even though I can, I can sing and mix and that be my vocal type. If, if things, yeah, what do I tend to do when I not thinking or defaulting or whatever? I would tend to be pulling a little bit. Take a look at that, Abby. See what you think. I'm not saying that's you. I don't know. But um, I can't remember, Abby. Did we do a private lesson? Um, when I say that now, I think maybe we did. Anyway, I've forgotten your. Uh, if I have, I've. I'm sorry, I can't remember the details of it, but uh, so just remember, everybody, that if you have a, hey, Norin, nice to have you here. If you have, a, even if you're mix, you could still be, you know, it might be a mix with a high larynx or it might be a mix with a little bit of, you know, maybe the vocal cords are a little bit light, lightly adducted. So um, just be aware that there are still things to work on and Sometimes that's the cause of the problem in the bridge. Okay. Ink. Uh, it's also Chuck, when I do lower larynx exercises, I can't get the hootie sound. I have to go into a light head voice sound instead of a full, a full voice sound. One of the things that I would like to just recommend uh, to you guys who are learning online is don't chase the sound. Don't chase the. Don't try and get a certain sound. What you want to do is, I would say number one is you want to get a connected tone. And that means you don't want, you want to ha not have the break there. Now you can feel it adjust, but you don't want to have a, a complete break of tone. And the second thing is you want to have the vocal cords well uh, um, uh, functioning at, at, the, at where you function when you talk, if you talk normally. And so um, those are the two things that you want to kind of, and you do that by feel is more than, more than chasing the sound. So if I were doing exercises, um, if I were doing a dopey exercise, I wouldn't worry too much about the sound of it. I would just say, I would be careful about how loud I do it. I'd want to do it a little bit softer. So it's more about how this, how it's feeling. And uh, go at it from that perspective, so that you're kind of perfecting the exercise itself, rather than worrying about how the sound is. You want to make sure the tone is staying connected, and you want to make sure that you're doing it. Uh, the vocal cords are pretty much where you talk, even though you're doing it in post. In other words, I'm not saying, I lost the adduction of the cords there, or I'm not saying, I'm not over tightening, I'm just right where I speak. Uh, blue lightning, hi, blue lightning, wow, nice to have you here today. Blue Lightning has a purple icon. Uh, ink. Sorry, Chuck, I meant my voice goes into a light head voice. Isn't, a, uh, isn't cracks or flips. As it automatically goes into a light head voice. That's okay. Light head voice can grow. If I said... E 
I started out light. I couldn't do that several years ago. But uh, if I were in falsetto, I would never be able to do that. So light head voice will lead to other great things. Blue lightning. Will my voice become bad if I hit puberty, like 17? Will my voice become bad if I hit puberty? Um, uh, will it become bad? No, not necessarily become bad. You won't be able to hit the high notes anymore for a while. You'll be locked out. There are ways to, to go around that, but it, it will take some work and some vocal exercises to get you there. Um, I, I put on, uh, just last week, you can go and see a 15-year-old keeps his larynx down. And it's showing, he's 15, and it's, a, it's, a, it's so hard when your voice starts to change, he can go all the way down to here. He's got a real deep voice, but he was doing exercises up here. But he was keeping that larynx really stable. It won't be long, and he'll be going through that bridge really nicely. But yes, Blue Lightning, it's the most difficult time in our singing life, us guys, is that puberty. But it's possible to, to get it to work. No, uh, Ink, I don't think that's correct. Ink says, uh, Blue Lightning, your voice can never become bad unless you're singing incorrectly. Or, you know, you probably have to clarify that, but I think I know what he's saying. Does that mean my voice, I'm going to be locked out on my high notes? Does it mean it's going to crack and break? Yes, yes. Um, but you can learn to reestablish the head voice correctly. Oh my gosh, 245. I've been having so much fun. Um, so let me just blast through a couple of these comments and I've got to go. Uh, Abby. Oh, thanks, Abby, for clarifying that. Uh, I know we've talked back and forth, and so I couldn't remember. Sorry. <laughs> I plan on doing private, she said, soon, though. But I look forward to that. Uh, Laoki Tapi, uh, Jacob Vocal Academy, also teach SLS. Cool. Um, Ink King, how do... Chuck, how do I grow the light head voice? Will it grow automatically? Um, I don't think it just grows automatically. I think we do have to do the exercises correctly. And um, over, over time, with correct exercises, it will grow. It's like uh, going to the gym. If you do the exercises correctly, you, you do the biceps, the triceps, the um, pull-ups, the pull-overs, the, you know, everything that's involved, it, over a period of months, the muscles will respond. And, um, and if you're really diligent and you eat correctly and, and so forth, in two or three years, you'll have abs too. And, you know, so yeah, that's the method. That's the process. Sometimes it's just doing laps, so to speak, for months upon months. And, uh, but as you do it correctly, that's adding to, that's adding to a lot of things happen. And then all of a sudden you get a little breakthrough. It seems all of a sudden. But you've been doing the work, you see. You've been you've been doing the, the work and the effort if you're doing them right. Now the other thing, the other side of the coin is true too. If you're doing them wrong, you won't make any progress. Um, you just do them wrong. You get better at doing them wrong. So um, practice doesn't make, make make perfect. Correct practice or perfect practice makes perfect. Um, okay, Chuck, how do I? Grow a light head voice. Oh, okay. We already said that. How often, how, how to soften consonants when singing? Thank you. So, um, you know, consonants will kind of take care of themselves, uh, UFO combat. And so, in other words, most all the consonants you can just do easier. So, if you're singing, um, If you said A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, G. You know, so if I hit it hard, I hit it hard. So I have to, I have to just dial it down. Do it more, do it softer. A, B, C, let me, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Don't overdo it. 
Now, I sometimes in the past have been guilty of that. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. And I've done that because I've had directors saying, I want diction, diction, diction. You know, you're on stage, you're in the ensemble, and they want every single, you know, consonant, every single uh, S and T and, and D and B and so that the audience can hear you. Well, that can throw you a little bit out of balance because we don't talk that way. We, we, so I'm just saying be moderate. Moderate your, your pronunciation of the vowel. Don't start it so hard. Don't start it so uh, tight. Don't start it so loud. Do it easy. Make an exercise out of it. A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. And uh, put a little wee, 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 Or foo, 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 Or he, 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 he. So let a little air escape once in a while. And I would go back and forth with something like that. Is it fine to sing immediately after doing exercises? Um, yeah, I think it's okay. Uh, I don't think there's any problem with it. You want to just re make sure you're hydrated because the vocal folds. Um, I mean, I, I, I guess you're talking about just doing vocal exercises. I don't know if I'd want to go work out and then go do a show. But... Um, yeah, I mean, I don't see any reason why that would be a problem. Okay, you guys, I, I got to run. I got students coming, and so uh, thank you very much. I hope this has been a little helpful. Many of you already know about this, but those of you who have, are just joining for the first time, uh, go to the go to powertosing.com and, uh, and take the vocal test. Um, I've actually, let me just see if I can throw this up here real quick. Um, boop. Okay. Oh, I've had that thing on all day. I thought I took it off. Sorry, you guys. Let me just pull that down. Um, but here's the here's the website. And um, if you go to powertosing.com and you arrow down, see if I can do this here. If you arrow, if you scroll down, you can see it says power test, and that's a video that explains it. Uh, it's not a very good picture. Sorry. But uh, you, you push this red button, it records, and you push these black buttons for men or, and women, and it'll play a piano accompaniment, and you sing, ah, like I demonstrated. Ah. Afterwards, you come down here and answer these questions, and, uh, and then submit the, submit the answers. So, sorry for the blurred condition, but, um, oops, went too far. So you come here, answer these questions, submit your answers, and then it'll send it to you in your email. And it'll have a summary of your answers, and then you can add it up and see what your vocal type adds up to be. And, um, and then you go to the Knowledge Center, which on the website, let me see if I can take you there. Go up to the Knowledge Center, and um, let me see. Again, that's kind of blurry. I think it's this wide one here. Let me see if that works. Yeah, so in the Knowledge Center, here on the right-hand side, pull chest, high larynx, light chest, no chest, um, flip falsetto, and then and the last one below that is mix. And uh, you click into those, and then you can, um, it will take you to uh, videos all about mix. It'll take you to videos all about Pull chest, high larynx, light chest, no chest, and so forth. So here's the example, pull chest, high larynx. What is it? It's a video all about that. Here are exercises to help with, you know, that will counteract the negative and build on, build the positive. And these are examples of professionals who have had surgery because they're pull chest, high larynx. Then you can download right here. Just download the exercises and you can use these to start working on your voice. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. Um, let me uh, just say, let me come back to the, the to the picture here, and um, 
So thank you for joining me today. I hope this has been helpful. I'm Chuck Gilmore with Power to Sing. And Power to Sing live today. Number 97. Remember, you can sing higher with beauty, confidence, and power. And I'll see you inside the next video.